So one of the most common requests I've been getting from you all is to explain the Marvel movie rights. Who owns which characters? Is there overlap between characters besides Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver? And so in this video, I'm going to be attempting to answer that question. But what we're going to do in this video and future videos on this subject is we're going to be sticking to the studios, meaning that in this video, we're going to be focusing on Sony and Spider-Man. In future videos, we're going to be focusing on 20th Century Fox and the properties they own, and then just kind of going from there. So. In order to make sense of this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping back to 1985 and we're going to have a bit of a discussion on why Marvel chose to dive into the movie scene in the first place. In 1978, Superman was released as a feature film and was wildly successful at the time, to be quite frank. And so a lot of eyes were looking towards Marvel. The question was, when is Marvel going to produce a feature film based on one of their characters? Now, Marvel also saw the success of Superman. And so Marvel wanted to do the same thing. They wanted to create a feature film. The problem here was that Marvel just didn't have the financial support. They didn't have the financial backing to actually launch their own feature film. And so what they did is they, I guess, began offering the ability for companies to license their characters in films starting in 1985 and the first character they did this with was spider-man now initially when they offered this up in 1985 there weren't a lot of people who were biting and the reason why was because by this time superman 3 had come out and a lot of people looked at superman 3 as just a dismal example of a, of a superhero film people thought it was a terrible film and so people were just sort of burned out they didn't really want to have anything to do with it and so while nobody was really biting at the uh, option to basically license a Spider-Man film, there was one studio that was, and this studio was actually called Canon Films, and it was an independent film studio. And so what happened when the deal was struck between Marvel and Canon Films, Marvel basically uh, would allow Canon Films to pay $225,000. And for this price, Canon Films would be able to control all aspects of the Spider-Man film. They would control everything from the initial screenplay all the way up to the distribution that would be done by Columbia Pictures. And so what ended up happening here is that in 1990, while the idea for Canon Films to produce a film was still an idea, the problem was that Canon Films was going bankrupt. And so what Canon Films did is they basically sold off the rights to Spider-Man to a company called Caraco Films. Now Caraco Films was again another independent film studio. And what Caraco Films actually did is they hired James Cameron to write the script for the Spider-Man film. But the issue was that again, much like Canon Films in 1995, Caraco Films was going bankrupt. And so the problem was that by this time, while Caraco Films was also going bankrupt and Spider-Man was just kind of held in limbo in terms of the films and whether or not one was going to be made, Marvel was filing for bankruptcy. And so at this point, the Spider-Man rights basically reverted back to Marvel, or at least it seemed to be that way. And so the lawyers from Marvel basically started analyzing Marvel's assets. The question being, if Marvel now owns the rights to Spider-Man in film form again, if those rights have reverted back to them and it's currently 1995 10 years after they initially offered the uh, rights up and nobody was offering then maybe like hollywood and, and society as a whole has moved towards a direction to where they really want to see more superhero films now they're kind of ready to see what marvel has to offer the problem was when the lawyers sat down and they started looking at the various assets of marvel and they looked at the film rights while initially it appeared as though marvel had uh, had owned the rights to spider-man they actually didn't that what marvel had done is they had basically started throwing the Spider-Man rights to anybody who would buy them. And the result was that MGM, Viacom, Columbia Pictures, and Warner Brothers, in addition to various other studios, all claimed rights to the Spider-Man film. And so over the course of about four years of legal battles or so, ultimately Columbia Pictures, which was a subsidiary of Sony, came out on top as the owner of the Spider-Man rights. And so this ultimately led to Sony being the ones that were able to, to uh, produce Spider-Man film-related content. Now, here's the kicker. In terms of the contract, as far as I've been able to figure out, what was basically outlined here was that Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man, Spider-Man's various villains, and related properties. Now, the related property segment is ambiguous at best because neither Sony or Marvel has basically come out and said, here are the characters that Sony has the rights to make characters to or make films to. I'm sure Sony knows who they are and Marvel knows who they are. It's simply we don't know who they are. And so while we know that Sony owns 
owns the film rights to Spider-Man, we don't know if Sony or Marvel own the film rights to Spider-Woman. We don't know if Sony or Marvel, which one of those two owns the rights to the characters that were created that were basically designed or different versions of Spider-Man after the terms of the contract were settled. These are things we don't know. And so we, for example, we have no idea whether or not Marvel can make a film based on Miles Morales. These are things that we just don't know. We have no real idea here. You know, it could very well be that when the contract was laid out, it was specified in such a way that Sony has the rights to all Spider-Man related content in film form, which includes any future related Spider-Man content. These are things that we just have no idea about. And so until either Marvel or Sony comes out and says this is the case, we're really just kind of speculating at best. The only thing we know for certain is that Sony owns the rights to the Sinister Six, to the Spider-Man properties, Aunt May, Mary Jane Watson, uh, those various characters, Gwen Stacy, and so on. We just don't know how far beyond that it goes. With that being said, I hope it makes sense. It's kind of weird. It's it's really kind of crazy. But again, this is all just very murky cloak and dagger kind of stuff here. So I will catch you guys later. Peace.